Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome everyone to the June meeting of the Merceboro Parks and Recreation. And at this time, I'd like to call this meeting to order. And as our custom, I'd like to call on Dr. Borner to uh, lead us in prayer and pledge, please. Thank you. Thank you. May we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, bless our community <clears throat> leaders and the members of the Park and Rec Commission guide and direct our path and decisions according to your word. We pray that you will turn our desires for this community so that they are in alignment with your will in every area. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. And you have in front of you the minutes from last meeting. I'll ask that you look at those and we'll entertain a motion to accept the meeting, the minutes. I move approval. Is there a second? I second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? There is none. So it looks like we have a fairly short agenda this, this month as compared to last month. So, um, but as we discussed earlier, it's, it's quality, not quantity, isn't it, Angela? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Great. So first item on the agenda, I think Melinda Tate it's going to help us with that and uh, consideration for an Eagle Scout project for the College Street Trailhead. Yeah, good afternoon. How are y'all? Good. Hello. I'm, a few months ago, I was approached by this young man, Jacob Cobb, about doing a project for the Greenway as part of his Eagle Scout requirements. And we brainstormed, we brought in uh, Jennifer Joins, who does some of our running programs. And we came up with something that we don't have already, and I think it would be very helpful and useful. And it's something that uh, Jacob could very well do for his Eagle Scout project. Um, what we're looking at is a stretching area for runners at the College Street Trailhead. Uh, we chose the College Street Trailhead because that's where a lot of runners will um, start their, their day. Um, and there are so many different ways they can go from there, uh, whether it's the Gateway Trail or go toward the battlefield or go toward the Greenway. So that's why we chose that location. Um, Jennifer suggested three types of stretches and either before or after a run or walk. And this uh, equipment or apparatus would fill those three stretches. And I'm not going to demonstrate right now, but it mm -hmm. involves putting your leg up on a, a bench or a rail or something and, and having something to hold on to and then maybe putting your, your foot up to stretch your whatever muscles those are back there. Okay, so mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we, uh, we recommend at this time that uh, Jacob be able to do his Eagle Scout project at this location um, with funds that he raises that's it. Yeah, <laughs> we're asking, seeking approval for this project. Awesome. Do you have any questions? Any questions from Melinda or Jacob? Jacob, how tall is this project? How? What's the dimensions on it? Like the timeline? Uh, no. How tall is it? How tall? I'm thinking somewhere like around eight to ten feet. Hmm. Maximum height. What's it going to be constructed out of? Wood? Metal? Metal. Are you a welder? I have some experience. <laughs> <laughs> if you want some ugly welds, give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob, how many, I know as part of an Eagle Scout project, don't you have to have some other volunteers help you? Yes, sir. How many other folks do you have? Uh, I don't have any guaranteed right now, but there are plenty of people that need to do these projects mm -hmm. and plenty of other people that I know very well that will be willing to help. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Awesome. Do you know how many hours it's going to take you to do it? Or? To actually set up the thing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
At most, probably like four hours. Yeah, very good. <laughs> Very good. Any other questions for Jacob? Do, do you have a budget for your project? You put like a small estimate to just sort of get a reference of what it is, but not an exact budget. Okay. And you're raising these monies yourself or, or through your troop and with the help of some of your other scout buddies, I bet. We're, we also have friends of the Greenway, which might be able to help us with it. Yeah, very good. Yes, we, um, we met last night and discussed this project, and um, the friends of the Greenway are always looking for things that would help the users of the Greenway, and this just fits in with what they want to do as well. Jacob, we appreciate your efforts in trying to make the Greenway better and our community better. Uh, I move for approval. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 Of course they are not. Thank you all so much and thank you, Jacob. Yeah, we look forward to, to seeing it and stretching over there. <laughs> Who knows we can use it. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Next on the agenda, Angela, I think you're going to speak with us about uh, renaming, um, or not renaming, but a policy for naming our parks and facilities. Yes, sir. In light of um, all of our references to the West Park and with recent purchase of a piece of property on Highway 96 that we have been calling the West West Park, it seems prudent to develop a policy to um, um, begin a process for public parks, parklands, and park facilities uh, naming. So looking at um, just kind of the background of, of where we are with this policy, and I will, I will spare reading the entire policy um, that is before you, uh, to you, uh, but the city council is responsible for the naming of all city-owned land and facilities. Um, from time to time, the public desires to have these um, land and facilities, such as parks, athletic fields, um, to be named after different individuals, geographical features, or prominent organizations. Um, this policy also creates opportunities for us to attract potential donors and sponsors who contribute significant funds to assist in the construction and the maintenance or in the operations of these land and facilities in exchange for naming rights. Um, this policy doesn't um, imply that, that all of our facilities will be named for an individual or a group or an organization. It just puts a policy in place when, um, when that potential does occur. Um, there are four general guidelines, and I, and I will um, read through those and then address any specific questions that you have. Um, first, the recognition of distinct geographical, environmental, or developmental features, um, the names of historical significance, um, and the names of city lands and facilities are, are very much encouraged. Um, also, re the recognition of individuals who have made a significant contribution to Murfreesboro, Rutherford County, Tennessee, the nation, or the world. Um, naming as early in the capital planning and development um, process as possible is also helpful. And then finally, sponsorship through significant funding, support from private donors for the construction um, or the ongoing maintenance and operation of the land and facilities in exchange for naming options. Um, the minimum sponsorship or donation amount necessary to achieve the level of significant sponsorship or donation um, shall, be um, shall be determined and then approved through the city manager um, or unless otherwise approved by city council. So basically in those sponsorships for the individual um, um, process, we would come before you again um, with laying that out if there are, are specific levels of donations that come with different um, naming opportunities. So the specific fees would be set um, at that time for that specific purpose. Um, the qualifying names, the naming process, um, addressing renaming and then donation sponsorship are detailed in the policy before you. Be happy to um, address any questions or, or concerns. Any questions? If none, do I have a motion to approve the policy? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. Okay, Angela, I think you're still up with the, uh, with the property acquisition. Yes, sir. Um, as identified in the city's comprehensive master plan, Murfreesboro 2035, um, Murfreesboro has a recognized need 
for park lands and for neighborhood parks. The property before you um, helps to address that need. Um, there is a map on the screen in front of you that shows a track um, located at Cornerstone Drive. Just to, to kind of um, um, zoom out for a moment, that property is in the Kaysen community. It is um, on the west side of Kaysen Lane, um, opposite the Kaysen Trail um, Road and Kaysen Trail Head. So um, you can see if you were to head um, on the map that is before you, if you were to go east, you would get to um, Kaysen Elementary very soon. Um, as you know, in that area, there are a lot of rooftops and not a lot of green space. And so this is something that I am I'm personally really excited about. Um, about the city's role in, in pursuing. Um, with this proposed purchase, um, we can provide a site for passive rec recreation in that area. Um, the city and the owner of the property um, that is there, we're looking at purchasing and have reached a tentative agreement for 12 acres of the 13-acre tract. Um, the tract is divided by Puckett Creek, with the city proposing to retain the creek as well as a buffer along the eastern bank of the, of the, of the creek. The remaining land east of the stream buffer would be subdivided into two residential lots to be retained by the owner. The proposed neighborhood park area is immediately north of the proposed Evergreen Farm Phase II Amenity Center, as well as the Puckett Creek Floodway, which will provide a continuation of the open space and park facilities, as well as stormwater protection features. So the property that is to the south of this um, is planned for development, and this would be a um, the timing of building this park would be in conjunction of that um, southern development. Um, the acquisition price is $3,000 an, an acre with the additional survey work and closing allowances. Total purchase cost would be approximately $50,000. Um, Forty of this would, be, would come from the city's stormwater fund um, with ad additional fees from future operating budgets. Um, this property acquisition has been um, unanimously approved by the Planning Commission and will go to City Council tomorrow night as well. So it is um, our recommendation that you uh, approve this purchase and the associated survey work acquisition subject to um, legal approval um, and the engine city engineer's um, satisfaction as well, uh, as well as other closing conditions of the project itself. What an awesome acquisition. Yes, sir. Any questions? I do, ha I do have a question. Yes. Uh, can you uh, describe or define passive recreation? Can I define it? Yes. Um, exactly what we're we talking about here. You bet. And I think um, exactly what we would be talking about in this um, particular piece of property um, would be yet to be determined. As we began development, we would come before you. To me, like just that basic difference between passive recreation and active rec recreation. Active, we're looking at athletic fields and tournaments and um, bringing in large groups, more destination. Now, I um, get the active piece. part. It's the <laughs> passive I'd like to understand. The, the passive park, I think walking trails, um, community uh, green space, um, preservation, conservation. Um, when you look at that creek and what kind of facilities would be appropriate in that and comparing to some of our existing uh, park space and looking at those differences, uh, I think Barfield Park is a really good definition of what that's like. The front side, you've got the ball fields. The back side, you've got the hiking trails. Um, so you can see the two of them working together with that disc golf in between making that transition between active and passive. Uh, as far as the specifics, um, what I would expect for this piece would include a, um, you know, in, in, and I think what you're asking in that question, what is passive in this space, um, we would obviously come back before this group with some different proposals, master planning, and, and what that looks like. Um, you know, perhaps just a perimeter walking trail would be appropriate, um, looking at, at what the opportunities are in that southern property uh, as part of the, the development that's being done um, through a private developer, um, really working together to make sure that that is a smooth transition with good ingress and egress into the park was, uh, is, of course, very important. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions? Do I have a motion that we approve this uh, acquisition? So moved. There a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? There is none. Motion passes. 
Thank you. Thank you. That is very exciting. Anytime we can do something like that in the neighborhood is, is great. So. Okay, who's that? Thomas? You gonna talk to us about our our great new uh, Miracle Field? Good afternoon, members of the commission. Thank you for having me. Uh, if you haven't made it out to Murfreesboro's greatest new asset, the Miracle Field Park is phenomenal. Uh, we are getting a, a lot of visitors uh, and we've got a very active league. So if you haven't come out uh, for a Saturday morning of games, uh, it turns into a very special place on Saturday morning, I'll say that. So if you get a chance to come out and watch the games, it is it's spectacular. Uh, but with the opening of the park and with any new facility, especially one this nice, uh, we were inundated with requests and wanting to rent it, shut down the park, hold, rent it out to entire groups. Uh, and while we want to make it clear that this is home to the Miracle League of Murfreesboro, everyone else is a guest, we do want to keep the park open all the time, just like our other parks. We, we don't close the park for any one group. However, we do uh, have figured out a way for groups to come and visit the park uh, and have a destination. The fields themselves, uh, we were able to allow groups to come and play games on the field. Uh, I'll give you a good example. City Schools is bringing their camp out. Uh, and they're going to spend a few of uh, 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 some time on the field itself and play an act actual ball game uh, and then they'll be able to enjoy the playground with the rest of the community. So that's kind of how we'll do our reservations uh, for folks that want to come. Uh, one other, the VA wants to bring their seniors out, which I think is fantastic uh, to be able to play games. Uh, because of the surface, they're able to get the wheelchairs and the walkers and stuff and be able to, to play a ball game. So. That's another great group that's going to come out. So what we try to do is prioritize how we'll allow these groups to come out uh, and what if there's fees involved or whatever. So before you is a policy, uh, rental policy, and it's, it's modeled after our field rental policy that we currently have. Uh, the Miracle Field itself, though, we want to make it accessible uh, to groups, uh, our partners like city schools, uh, and especially nonprofit organizations that that cater specifically to the special needs community. So we prioritize usage in how we would make those reservations. Starting with the Miracle League, of course, they would have uh, first priority over anyone else. Uh, and then city schools and their special ed program uh, would be second in line. And then organizations, 501c3s that are nonprofits that are specific to uh, special needs kids, such as special kids, uh, they would be next in line if from Murfreesboro. Uh, and then we incorporated other special needs organizations throughout the Middle Tennessee area. Uh, and on down the line to the very bottom where families and, and uh, individuals can rent the field uh, if it's available. Uh, but to keep individuals and families and churches from renting the field from here till eternity, uh, we're saying that they can only rent it 10 days in advance. Uh, so if it's available in the next 10 days, then they can get a reservation. Uh, but they'll have to contact us in August if they want to rent it for an August event. Uh, and that's how we'll handle that. Other uh, groups will be able to rent it a little further out. And we'll follow our same policy that we have in terms of athletic fields, whereas groups can only rent uh, one or two times a week and a maximum of three times per month. Uh, and we hope that that would satisfy the needs of the communities and, and you know, we want the, the space to be utilized. We want people to be able to, to use the field, not just for Saturday morning ball games and practices in the evening, but if we can maximize its usage during the day. I contacted the manufacturers of the field and the surfacing and aside from putting blow torches and razor knives on it, the field is virtually indestructible. Uh, so we want to maximize that. The biggest uh, factor to the, the deterioration of the field is the weather itself, uh, the sun and the climate change. Uh, so we're going to have to deal with that regardless. Uh, so we want to get, if you drive by and you see that kids are on the field, I had a, a gentleman last night that wanted to give me a heads up that there were kids on the field yesterday. We try to, if we have a staff member available, we try to leave that open. So it's just ongoing wiffle ball game. Uh, and, and it's anyone walk up want to play. So we have a staff member there, make sure everybody gets a turn and everybody is being included. Uh, but we want to make that a place where you can just go play ball and everybody can. 
Uh, but we've added some fees for those individuals and families that want to rent. Uh, we rented at a, at a two hour block, $75 for the two hour block. Uh, and we say, you know, we thought about a one hour block, but typically if you're going to rent it for an hour, it's going to take you 30 minutes to get on the field, 30 minutes to get cleaned up. It turns into a two hour rental. So a good two hour block, that's time to have a ball game and, and come onto the field. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions for Thomas? I think it's awesome that it's so accessible to the public. I'm like that guy that drove by, so I'll drive by there and I'll see somebody. I said, well, they're not supposed to be out there, but <laughs> yeah, they are. They're supposed to be out there right. using it. So we, we, want, we want people to use it. And the whole goal of the park and the, the boundless playground is I, I've had folks that uh, talk about some of the older kids are, are not sharing and things. Well, we're trying to put staff in place, but the whole purpose is for all of these kids to play together. Uh, you know, we've got the t-ball field there. We're scheduling four and five-year-old t-ball games at the same time as the Miracle League games. So the hope is that over time we can change the way these kids grow up thinking about interacting with special needs kids because when they're four and five and they're interacting, uh, by the time they're our age, it, there's no barrier. You know, they, they didn't grow up with those barriers, so they're, they're non-existent. So we're hoping to change a culture. Cool. Any questions? I'll entertain a motion. Well, it definitely is a, a model facility for not only this community, but for everyone. Absolutely, and involved. we've had uh, we've had at least five other communities that have come to visit. I know I've given three different tours, uh, and this weekend we actually have the Tennessee Municipal League, which is cities throughout the state. Uh, we're giving a tour there, so all of them are excited and anxious to, to look at that facility and help model it. Mm -hmm. We're setting trends. I move approval. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There's none. Thank you Thank so you. much, Thomas. Okay. That's the end of our new business. And um, as always, we look forward to Becky Johnson coming up and updating us with what's going on. Good afternoon. <laughs> well, this week we have kicked off our Movies Under the Stars series. It started this week. Um, so far we've been to Barfield Crescent Park on Monday and last night at Cannonsburg Village. So you still have three more opportunities to catch this week's movie. Um, Thursdays are at Richard Siegel Neighborhood Park. Fridays are at Case and Lane Trailhead. And Saturdays are at McFadden Community Center. The movies start at 8.30 each night just as it gets dark. So we encourage people to bring blankets and lawn chairs and come enjoy the free movie. Then we also have our Food Truck Fridays. They will be continuing through the month of June from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Cannonsburg Village. We will have a variety of food trucks for people to come and have a nice outdoor lunch. And we are gonna take a break in July and August simply because of the heat. And then they're gonna resume again in the fall with Food Truck Fridays. Then we have Small Fry Try. That is this Saturday, June 10th from 10 to 11 a.m. at Old Fort Park next to Kids Castle. It's a, the world's smallest triathlon. Kids will run, bike, and swim. And by swim, we mean run through sprinklers <laughs> for the small fry try. And they can pre-register um, through tomorrow at Sportscom, Patterson Park Community Center, or the Wilderness Station. If they aren't able to pre-register, they can arrive Saturday and register on site between 9.30 and 10 a.m. And it's that the cost is six dollars, which includes the trophy. Everyone who participates gets a trophy. Then we have third Friday night. Um, we've had the third Friday night concert series. We've added food trucks, so now it's the third Friday night food truck and concert series at Cannonsburg Village. And Friday, June sixteenth, the band will be Rockvale Blues. The food trucks will be there from six to nine p.m. and the music is from seven to nine p.m. at Cannonsburg Village. Splash Out. This is a, a favorite we've had for several summers now. Um, that is where we will have the fire, Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department comes out with a fire truck and they spray the water in the air at a parking lot and the, and the kids just run around and get wet and have a great time. And that will be Thursday, June 22nd, will be at Siegel Neighborhood Park. Thursday, July 6th at Barfield Crescent Park by Pavilions 5, 6, and 7. 
and Thursday, July 20th at Old Fort Park, and it's from 1.30 to 3 p.m. So we just encourage um, children to come with clothes that they don't mind getting wet and bring a towel and have a great time. Boat Day with SRWA, which is Stones River Watershed Association. That will be Saturday, June 24th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Manson Pike Trailhead. It is free for all ages. There's no registration required. You just come between 9 and 12, and you get to try out a variety of watercraft there in the Stones River. And believe it or not, the July 4th is not all that far away, so we're encouraging everyone to come out and celebrate the 4th at McKnight Park. There is a variety of activities all day long from 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. will be the Rock the Pool Party at Sportscom at Borough Beach. From 3.30 to 6.30, we will have a live band, the Audio Saints, and we will have family games and activities and inflatables. Then at 7.50, we'll have some welcome and introductions. The Color Guard will present colors, and the Murfreesboro Symphony will play, and then the fireworks begin at 9 p.m. So we encourage everybody to come to McKnight Park on July 4th. Um, I do have a few camps that I want to mention that um, are still available. We have, most of them are uh, full, but we have spaces available in our cheerleading camp, our eco art camp, guard start camps one and two, and thank you five seniors. So if anybody's still looking for a few camps this summer, we have a few spaces available. We encourage you to register. And uh, for more information on all of our programs, you can pick up our Rec Connection or download it off of our website at murfreesborotn.gov slash parks or check out one of our Facebook pages. Thank you so much, Becky. No Bunch going on, as always. Yes. Keep it up. <laughs> and it looks like that's all of our business for today. No one has anything else. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Steve. A question. Um, feedback from Spring Fling, um, major event for Parks and Rec. Well, Spring Fling was a huge success yet again. Uh, some of our numbers were down for the events we host. Of course, we host tennis, soccer, and softball. Uh, because the limited number of local teams, I think, is, is a credit that. It wasn't a huge decrease. However, baseball numbers were up because there were three uh, Rutherford County teams in baseball. And a track and field was up because of the many athletes that were involved in track and field. So it balanced out. Uh, it was a very successful event. TWSAA were, was happy on all levels, and uh, they're the ones that – need to be happy to make sure that coaches and everybody else but I, I think I don't think anybody got any negative feedback other than maybe minor suggestions here and there that we we typically always get uh, but it was a huge success and we appreciate all the many volunteers I think that's what makes Spring Fling so great uh, for the state of Tennessee is because when they show here Murfreesboro rolls out the red carpet and that's that's everybody that's not just the city employees that's the the volunteers, the, the local organizations, the restaurants, everybody feels at home. I had a buddy from Dyersburg that came with his daughter and was just blown away by the hospitality. Very good. We're adjourned. Thank you.